Well, welcome to the kitchen garden on a pretty, pretty end of May morning. Here we have my huge planting of thyme. This garden is not as productive as my main garden, I think for a couple of reasons. First, there is a lot of shade, a lot more shade than when my father established this garden. There is sun, as you can see, but it doesn't necessarily sustain all day. There's Otis over in the end. So this garden is due for a little bit of a cleanup later today, which is a chore. If you have a garden, you know you've got to do that cleanup. And this one, I've got a weed whack and I've got to pick up these various little bits of planters and such. All right, earlier I did a video of um, when I was cutting back and uh, these blackberry vines and trying to get them ready for the spring, uh, ready for production. And you can see that they are, they are loaded with blossoms. So this is, and you can begin to see the fruit forming here. These are blackberries that my father planted many, many years ago. And um, when he was in his many late years, uh, and in his last couple of years, he was really not able to care for his garden like, uh, like he would like. And the, the blackberries went completely crazy. <laughs> but um, my first springtime here, when we uh, took over this property, I cut them back. I sort of went crazy trying to get them under, under control. And um, we had blackberries that year. And each year since then, I've been much more mindful about uh, careful pruning um, and tying up and most importantly, putting some bird netting on, although still the squirrels can always outwit me. Are you smelling the blackberries, Otis? So this blackberry row, um, blackberries will be ready probably around, usually come in around the 4th of July. I love watching the bees and the butterflies um, come visit these flowers. This garden has um, originally had four planting uh, quarters, plots, four by four plots that my dad had done. Um, and I have been uh, working on those. As well. I've not been doing as much back here as I would like this year because um, we have this idea and kind of a, a plan that we want to do some building. And I was hoping that that could start this summer. It might start later in the summer, but I didn't want to invest too much, I guess, effort <laughs> into growing crops that we might end up uh, pulling out. So mainly these are like greens and I'll grow some beans back here this summer and some things in containers. And, um, but my main garden down the, in my other tour that you saw, that's my big producer. These are some contender beans that I planted along with some mizuna that is on its way out. In this plot, I had some baby bok choy. And if you look really careful right here, there's a little bean coming up. And here's a little bean coming up here too. So those are more contender beans. So I'll, I'll continue to put waves of uh, beans in this plot. I started these beans indoors and then transplanted them out so that I would have an early crop. You know, I love my peas and I have three trellises of peas growing in the kitchen garden so I can just come out and have a snack anytime. It's my snack closet. Throughout the spring, I had many waves of radishes, but obviously it, radishes are done. They are blooming now. I've also planted this Barise Swiss chard and it's just not looking fantastic. I'm not sure what to do here. I think I'm going to, first of all, I think they need to be thinned. Secondly, I'm gonna give it a shot of fertilizer. I don't, I'm not sure what's happening with this. But here, it's a very lovely calendula that's about to bloom. I did plant a tomato. This is a um, semi-determinate tomato. It's called the Glacier. It was pretty beat up when I planted it, but I do notice that it's getting new growth and the new growth is looking okay. So I'm hopeful. I'm gonna get the rest of these radishes out of here and hopefully this, this tomato can grow up to be happy alongside the beans. Here I've just taken some leaves of dandelion that were growing alongside and I just chopped and dropped them as a little light mulch. Dandelions are something called dynamic accumulators. And what that means is their roots go way down in the soil and they're able to access nutrients that other plants can't access. That's one of the reasons why they'll grow just about anywhere is that they're capable of really digging in and um, getting those nutrients. So I, I am not in favor of cutting down dandelions. Um, in fact, I'm in favor of letting them grow, chopping the leaves and popping them as mulch 
onto your garden space. Here's my second pea trellis. It's just sort of growing out of control here, leaning over the lettuces that are happily growing along in this bed. This is mainly a lettuce bed, and there's some sprouting onions over here as well, bunching onions, finally looking better. I cut back these chives about three weeks ago. I said, I guess about three weeks ago, and they are blooming again already. So you can continually do that and harvest them. These beans are yellow beans, I believe. These beans are called gold rush, and these are plants that I started indoors. I need to do a second planting out, out here. And this bed also is a Floridale tomato and some kale. And that, my friends, is the oregano I cut back and harvested en masse. It's coming out again. Oregano coming to get you. Here is my asparagus bed, which is ill-situated for um, weeding. So there are lots of things that I have to get in there and weed out. And it's really not easy. Um, my dad established this and I, I'm just letting it be because it is great asparagus. So I have been harvesting and trying to revive the bed, but a couple things make this area really difficult. First of all, it's got a fence on two sides and it's, it's very difficult to access and uh, reach in in a four by four. It really should be more in a line. Um, so it's very hard to weed. So one of the other things that happens is these fronds tend to flop over. So I'm going to take a big, huge cord and actually wrap it around and kind of hold them up as the summer wears on so they don't flop into my main garden. This was where the, the bed that was struggling so much, and I'm kind of letting that one be. I'm putting down some hay mulch. I gave it some fertilizer. I've got some, um, the, the prize choy is coming up. The dianthus are beautiful, and the carrots are still coming along. Here's my lemon balm jungle. And this bed had some early spinach. It's got more peas. It's got some thyme and a borage plant and chives, and those are bolting bok choys. So I think, I'm not sure what I'll put in here. It might just be flowers. Well, here are the potatoes that were planted very first. And these are the ones that had the slug damage, but also these ones, as you see, are looking really bad. And that's actually a really good sign because we should be getting some potatoes now. And I am gonna go ahead and see if we've got any potatoes. These other ones were planted later and they are not yet ready to, uh, they're not dying back, but they are flowering. All right, so that means that potatoes, this is the time that the tubers begin to form or they're getting ready at least. They're really pretty flowers. Otis is enjoying himself in the sunshine. This is actually a hog panel, which is three feet wide, not four. Um, and I have, uh, I'm planting another one of the passion flower vines that will climb up there and it is starting to climb here, I see. This one is sort of going the wrong direction, no, wrong way, Jose. So we have to correct that. Outside of the kitchen garden, I had intended to have bags of strawberries, but this tomato decided to plant itself. It's growing so heartily, I'm just letting it. This bed is my late bloomer bed. I have planted it. Oh good, it looks like maybe some things are starting to come up in here, possibly. Um, this will be a flower bed, but I just put the flowers in a couple days ago. All right, this is where we had the vole issues. Um, I'm on the ex outside of the fence now, and Otis is on the inside. Hi Otis. I'm gonna take a little rest in the shade. Right. we've got another bucket of potatoes. Those are just store-bought potatoes. I've got loads of volunteer cilantro, which I love. Um, some more strawberries planted in ground. This is what garlic when it's about ready to pull, which I will be doing very, very soon. This bed that got hit by the bowls, and it's not thriving. I've, and I honestly, I've been kind of neglecting it because I was so disgusted with the bowls. This is a Mexican sunflower that is growing um, by the garlic and some walking onions right here. Pulling back, I have um, a bed of, of perennials here and dill and different things, as well as one errant locust tree now. I see 
I got to get in here and chop that thing down. Locust trees are really fast growers and they pop up. They seem to pop up everywhere. And we have a lot of them up here. I don't mind. Um, they, are, they have pretty blossoms in the springtime and smell nice. Uh, but I do mind them popping up in the middle of my flower bed. Uh, glorious. Hi, butterfly. I did not mean to disturb you off of the butterfly weed. You go right back to it. Looking from the opposite end, you can see that I have planted a peony here. This peony was in its second year and I did get a bloom off of it. Actually, two blooms I got off of it. So I think I now have my plan for this area. I've been gradually building out these beds. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is extend this one out another two feet. Actually, I'll get rid of the path there, extend the actual bed out two feet, continue with the side path here and then plant additional, I will plant additional peonies and flowers um, as a boundary here of that. And I think that will help with the uh, mowing, et cetera, and weeding and things like that. This area gets the morning sun, as you can see, it's beating down on me now. These massive old boxwoods are, do a lot of shading uh, in, the, in the afternoon, but this walnut tree is just huge and it shades. That's the tree that really throws the most shade into the garden. And uh, why this garden, I think, is not as productive as it used to be once upon a time. But it's great for things like lettuces and things that can tolerate more shade.